Well, lo and behold, the battle continues with the models uh, waxing, waning. There was some warmer runs of the GFS uh, last night, and now it's trending back the other way once again. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's uh, it's going to be right up until the last minute, I think, with regards to what we're going to see on Christmas Day. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. It's the 20th of December now. We are quickly approaching Christmas. Want to look at the uh, ECMWF and the GFS and particularly the, the 850 millibar temperature chart because uh, I think that says a lot. Rather than just looking solely at low pressure, um, it's um, it's I think it's a good idea to have a look at the temperatures at 5,000 feet because um, it's the movement of the areas of low pressure but also the area of milder that these areas of low pressure uh, drag in that's quite important as well now of course track is everything with regards to low pressure further north you go milder it is uh, the further south it goes the more chance you're going to drag in colder air and increase the potential for snow if you find yourself north of the low there's a pretty decent chance that you're going to see snowfall of course south of the low it's going to be all rain i'm afraid but the ecmwf you can see here that um, there is uh, some fairly substantial ch uh, differences between the ECM and the GFS, and I want to look at that in a little bit more detail. But these models, folks, are fluctuating back and forth, and I'm trying my best to not get too bogged down by each individual run, um, because they're, they're still shifting around quite substantially at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, modelling has a hard time dealing with high pressure in the high latitude region. It also has uh, a problem with the uh, slider lows coming underneath the block of, of high pressure as well. The model often underestimates the, the block up to the north. It also um, underestimates the, the, the depth of cold air available um, fairly nearby as well so there is a lot of different things that the modeling is, is struggling with at the moment and I think it's really going to uh, take us right up until um, the last minute here I think but it looks as if we are going to see um, a, a kind of a bit of a mild uh, spell uh, in in the run-up to actually Christmas itself it's actually on Christmas Day from the latest model runs that actually sees uh, the action taking place and that shift to colder if we get the colder but we may get it we may not get it uh, it's as simple as that and if i do get it wrong i will hold my hand up remember that uh, really the focus uh, in terms of the, the december forecast was always going to be a colder spell at the end of december never did i really say that there would be a white christmas uh, i did say that there was a 50-50 a chance of a white christmas i also alluded to the fact that we may see um, a change to, to snowier times, especially from Boxing Day on to New Year's Day. And some of the models have quite a warm uh, Christmas Day, the uh, New Year's Day uh, on, uh, on their solution. So if that's the case, I will be wrong and I'll hold my hand up. But I just want to specify some of the things that has been said. Um, and uh, But anyway, uh, let's get right to it. ACMWF. We've got the area of low pressure out over the Atlantic. We've got another system uh, way to the north of the British Isles that will be diving southwards here. And it's the push of, of the cold air um, battling with the, the, the push of milder air coming up from the south that is going to be the real, the real challenge in forecasting because we've got essentially two air masses, one coming from the south and one coming from the north. And exactly who wins will determine really whether we get a mild Christmas or, or a cold Christmas. So the, the ECMWF, as you can see here, this is a Tuesday the 21st. We've got the area of low pressure. I know it's probably not overly clear in this chart, but the area of low pressure is way out over the Atlantic here. And of course, you've got a fetch of several hundred miles to the east of that system where you've got essentially southerly winds and warmer that's going to be lifting northwards here. All the while, we've got an area of low pressure that is sinking south over the Norwegian Sea. And what that's going to do is it's going to fight against the milder that's trying to come uh, up from the, the south. 
and it is going to collide over the northern half of the British Isles. Now, this is on Wednesday here, and you notice here that the fine line right here between cold enough air for snow and a cold, a mild air that will simply produce rainfall here. Of course, we also need to consider things like undercut and colder, uh, beneath warmer and, and things like that. So there, there's a lot of complexity to this. But the ECMWF looks as if it's going to try to hold the colder almost to the far north of Scotland here. So this would indicate to me that certainly during Christmas Day, any snow prospects according to this model now remember it's going to chop and change even still would be confined to the northeast of scotland uh, and that is uh, important to specify that is this model run then we've got a, a, a pretty deep area of low pressure in fact that sweeps up from the south um, and that could be a, actually quite a stormy scenario here um, for the British Isles here. Then that area of low pressure bumps into the cold air that, that's kind of sitting parked over the, the northern to the north of the UK. That then uh, gets kind of essentially that wall of cold forces the area of low pressure east and then in comes the cold air for a period of time here um, as we go forward here. So um, it looks as if it would be during the second half of the month that we, uh, or should I say, the second half of the Christmas uh, three-day period that we actually see snowfall. Looking at the GFS, um, because that is quite different, this is the operational run, and there is quite a difference between it and the, G uh, the ECMWF, sorry, um, because the area of low pressure, um, similar position, but slightly different dynamics in place. What we're seeing is that area of low pressure spinning over the North Atlantic, we've got the, that other system coming down from the Norwegian Sea. But what happens is, while we see a fairly mild um, Christmas Eve, so this is Thursday, uh, the 23rd, which isn't Christmas Eve, in fact, but we can see here, on this is the, the 23rd of December, area of low pressure to the west of the UK, dragging up milder air from the south here. So that is certainly not a particularly cold look. Uh, over most of the British Isles here but as we go forward here and even person into Christmas Eve still the cold air is essentially to the north of the British Isles however the difference is er, while the area of low pressure is to the west of the British Isles there is a little bit more push of the cold to the north and eventually that actually gets to sink south and I think the reason for that essentially is is that area of low pressure may be on the GFS slightly slower at moving east and allows the cold air to the north to come south. So if you notice here, this is Saturday, uh, Christmas Day, 1800 hours. We've got the colder air sinking south over the UK here with that area of low pressure here. And that is a very different scenario in a sense the ECMWF because the ECMWF keeps the, the cold air to the north here. So um, that would make a big difference in terms of snowfall. And let's have a look at the snowfall. You notice here, this is Monday the 27th, the UK is bathed in cold air. And that cold air appears to stick around during next week, whereas the ECMWF um, moves it along pretty quickly here. So let's have a look at the um, let's have quickly have a look at the um, ECMWF first because it has quite a different prospect snow wise uh, compared to the GFS. So we'll skip through the sequence here. You can see here very little to speak about in the the days running up to Christmas. Then we get a little bit of snow across the northern half of the British Isles here, but that's really about it. If you notice here, we get a little bit southwest Scotland, northwest England. Uh, during Christmas Day, a little bit more in the way of snow across Scotland, if you notice here, but still, probably the central lowlands not really seeing anything at all. That looks to me like a high ground feature as opposed to a widespread snow, and then it disappears. You notice that because the model has a, a milder solution after Christmas here. But if we go back the way and look at the GFS, that is rather different indeed. Skip through the next several days, very little to speak about. 
Uh, of course, we've got the, the little bit of mild surge coming in uh, ahead of Christmas itself. We get a little bit of snow with a system coming in during the day on Thursday. But then as we go through Christmas Eve, in the Christmas day, bang, look at that there. So it's indicating heavy snowfall now across much of Wales, through the Midlands, uh, really stretching from as far north as Manchester, uh, you know, Sheffield, Leeds, um, higher parts, uh, Derbyshire, for example, um, all the way down through Birmingham and eastwards into East Anglia here. We've got a fairly substantial snow cover uh, developing here with this type of scenario. So the GFS is definitely indicating something fairly interesting. And then as we press through the week, we see the snowfall kind of waxing and waning in terms of expanse as we go forward here. So, um, yeah, still all to play for, isn't it, really? Um, GFS, the mediogram, let's have a quick look and see what it is indicating. So this is for Sheffield. And uh, you can see here, I'm just trying to get the dates here, squeezing into the, the chart here. So you can see here, the, this is off the GFS, like I say, We've got a little bit of a downward trend in temperature. Then we get a surge up to 8 degrees. And then the temperature kind of drops off um, Christmas Eve. Christmas Day is 6 degrees. It's not overly cold. But you notice here that there's a big difference down to a high of just 2 degrees on Boxing Day, uh, the 27th. And then even highs of only 1, even 0 as we push towards the New Year period here. Let's have a look at uh, London Luton. And you can see here again, warm surge ahead of Christmas. Then we get a little downward trend, then bang. Um, at, uh, once, once we hit Boxing Day, and the days after that, we're seeing daytime temperatures, um, you know, only hitting zero Celsius, which is quite interesting. This is for Edinburgh. Same idea again, warm surge ahead of Christmas. Then we get the downward trend, even on Christmas Day, a high of only 3 degrees, low of 1, 3 degrees on Boxing Day. Then we've got highs of, of only 1 and 0 in the days uh, after that. Then we've got a surge of warmer, if you notice here, 12 degrees actually uh, on the 2nd of January here. So plenty of things still chopping and changing and I'll keep you posted as best I can as we go forward. Hope you enjoy. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and please, of course, hit the like button, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel, and stay up to date. Hope you have a great evening. Bye for now.